Hey guys, welcome to the online course Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management. Today is Chapter 5. We are going to analyze and do valuations of banks. Now, in Chapter 4, we have go over the capital asset pricing model, which allow us to estimate the required return of risky securities in the stock market. Now, we know that for firms, there are normally two ways to raise capital in the market. One is by issuing new shares. The second is by borrowing debt. Now, they can do so by asking for a loan from banks, or they can simply issue a bond. Now, bonds is a security normally issued by governments and listed firms. So, by buying this bond, a investor become the debt holder of the government or the corporations. Now, the use of equity and the use of debt is actually quite different. So, let's give a quick rundown for your comparisons before we started class. Now, when we talk about the use of debt by a company, it can be in the form of bond. And when we talk about firms using equity refinancing, it is done by issuing new shares. So, here are two examples of each. Now, the cash flows associated from buying a bond comes from two ways. First is the interest payment, which comes in a fixed time interval at a fixed amount, and it is referred as coupon payment. And at the end of this bond life, which is the maturity of this bond, we are going to receive a repayment of principal, which is the face value of bond. However, for shares, if we do not sell the shares, the only source of cash inflow within our holding would be cash dividend. And different from coupons, the level of cash dividend is not fixed. And also, for bond, receiving coupon represents a fixed obligation of bonds. However, for shares, paying cash dividend is not its obligation. And the level of cash dividend is also rather flexible. Now, that's the big difference between the two. Also, not paying coupons on time and at full amount is against the law because law requires you have to pay your debt on time as well as the contract stated. However, not paying dividend has no legal outcomes or consequences. So, that's the big difference between coupon and dividend. The next one is the maturity. Now, like I said, the bond has a fixed life. By the end of the maturity, we repay principal. That is the end of the bond. However, for shares, there is no well ending for a shares life unless the firm got delisted. Well, then that the share lives ends. But there is no maturity when we talk about the life of the shares. And also, we know that the debt holders, different from shareholders who are residual value holders, the debt holders actually have the first to claim asset when the firm goes bankruptcy. And after the bondholders or the debt holders collect whatever belongs to them, what is left goes to shareholders if there is anything left. So we can see that there is actually a conflict of interest between the debt holders and the shareholders. The next difference between debt holders and the shareholders is the control right. Now, the owner of the listed firm is shareholders and not debt holders or bond holders. So the bond holders do not have voting rights, meaning that they do not have control rights to decide company policy and company operations. And for shareholders, they have control rights because they own the company. So those are some of the difference between well bond holder and shareholders. Now let's look at 
bonds with a greater detail. Now, the bonds have some basic characteristics. The first one is its per value. Now, it is normally in the form, say, 100, 1,000, 10,000. So it is the face value of the bond, which will be repaid in the form of lump sum, means that it will be paid at once at the end of the bond life. And we know at the end of the bond life is when the bond matures. So the years till the bond matures is our, let's say, years to maturity, our maturity term. And then we have the coupon rate. Now, coupon rate is the stated interest rate of this bond. Now, every about six months, we receive one coupon payment. Well, we can also receive coupon payments annually, but in a more common sense, it comes within every six months. Now, the coupon rate is the stated interest rate times the per value or the principal value of the bond gives to the annual coupon payments. Now, if we are getting coupon payments every six months, then every six months, the coupon equals to coupon rate times per value divided by two. Well, if we only receive coupon one time a year, then just divide it by one. Now, when we talk about the selling price, or we want to give a valuation of balance value, we need to know what is the component or what build up the current selling price of the bond. It is actually a discounted present value of all the future cash flows. Now, we have said that the cash inflows associated from buying the bond is coupon and the repayment of principal at the end of the maturity. However, these two payments have different timing schedule. The first one is paid periodically, for example, every six months, and the principal is repaid once at the end of maturity. So, here we have the evaluation form of the bond selling price now. Now we can see it is a discounted function. So here is the present value. That's the present value of all the coupon payments in together. That's the sum. So the basic idea here is we discount these coupon payments one by one. Now, for example, the first coupon payment, say it comes at the end of year one, then the first discount payment within this function would be, let me take out my magical pen. So the first coupon payment, C1, divided by one plus I. So that is our discount factor within the first investment term, has the power of one. Now, for the second coupon payment, which comes at the end of year two, say, then the discount factor becomes one plus I. So that's the interest rate, and then right to the power of two, indicating that there are two investment terms. And then it continues until we add the last one. For example, the nth coupon, the nth coupon, and then we give a discount factor, right to the power of n. So this count them one by one adjust for when they occurred. So adjust to the timing of the cash receipt. Now, that is, we give a sum function, it comes to here. So this is the PV, this is the present value of coupon. And here, here is a single asset discount model, and here is the lump sum payment of the principal. So that is the face value of the bond. And we discount this repayment by, well, the function here has i divided by two because in this function, the investment term, that's, that's the length of time we get every coupon payment. Here is six months. And in the example I write down here, it is annual payments. And here is six months, semi-annually payments. So we divide the interest rate by two. And now, when we talk about the n here, it actually refers to 
here, the number of years to maturity, because and that is when the principal is paid. It is being paid at the very end, very end of the bond life. So when we discount that, we need to adjust for all the investment terms and times two in corresponding to I divided by two here. Yeah. So this T here is different from N because T here indicates the number of the investment period, while N indicates the number of years actually. So just pay attention to these two differences. So this T here is in corresponding to here. So indicating well the sequence of the coupon payment. Now, let's have a basic idea about the evaluation terms of bonds. We can see that the bonds evaluation of the bonds current selling price is actually given by first its maturity, second coupon rate, third yield to maturity. So that is our discount factor. And the last one is the face value. Now, if we want to know such bonds current selling price, we need to discount the coupon payment back to now and we need to discount the principal repayment at the end of the maturity to now. So if we have a one year investment with two investment terms with six months, six months a coupon payment, six months a coupon payment. So within this investment term, we have two coupon payments each one equals to 10%, that's the coupon rate, times face value, that's 1,000, and then we are getting six months payment, so divided by two. So that means we are going to have 50, is it? Yes, it's 50, 50. Sorry, it does not work now, okay, it works now. Okay, that's 50, and by the end of this maturity, which is also the time we receive the last coupon payment, we have the principal, that's $1,000 principal, and plus our coupon payment, second coupon payment of $50. So that is the cash flow. Sorry, it's kind of messy. Hope you can still get that. Now, that's the cash flows within the first investment term. Now, that's the cash flows at the end of the second investment term. Now, here, look at the discount function. That's the first coupon payment, and that is the first discount function. Because the investment term is six months a time, so we need to adjust the YTM to divide that by two, indicating that that's the yield to maturity within six months period. And the second term gives us first, that's the second coupon payments, and that is the principal. So those, those are the cash flows at the end of investment term two. And we divide this part of cash flow by a discount function raised to the power of two, indicating that this is the second investment terms. So we need to adjust for first the term of the investment, yeah. what's the order, and also the interest rate. How long is the investment term? If it is six months a time, then we need to adjust that and that by dividing two. Because these two are both nominal annually rate. So we need to adjust them. If the investment term is just one year, indicating that within one year there's only one coupon payment, then we do not need to do adjustment here. All right, so without, well, without you doing the question, I solve it for you. The end result for this equation is actually 1,000. So this 1,000 occurs when the coupon rate equals to YTM. So that's when we have a current selling price equal to face value of $1,000. Now, let's look at case two. With everything, say the same. 
let's make only one change. That is, we change the coupon rate from 10% to 50%. Now, within this function, if nothing else changed, we simply raise 10% to 15%. Without any calculation, we would know the result from changing 10% to 15% would be higher than this 1,000, right? Because we raise this 10% to 15%. So that means when the coupon rate is higher than the YTM, we have the current selling price above its face value of 1,000. And that extra value is given by the higher coupon rates compared to its YTM. Now, let's look at the third case. Still, everything else remains the same. We just change the coupon rate from 10% to 5%, means that we drop the coupon payments. Now, without any calculation, based on the equation here, if we drop the 10% to 5%, there's no doubt. The end result of the new equation with 10% changing to 5% would lead to an end result less than 1,000. So that means when the coupon rate is smaller than the yield to maturity, the selling price, the current selling price of the bond is below its face value. Now, when the bond is priced above its per value, we say this bond is being sold at a premium. It's a premium bond. Now, if the coupon rate is smaller than the yield, then that means the bond will be sold below its per value, and that indicates it is a discount bond. The comparison between yields and coupon actually gives us, well, the definition of whether it's a premium bond or a discount bond. However, pay attention that the relationship, whether which one is large between yield and coupon, doesn't really reflect the, well, quality of this bond or the rating of this bond, or let's say the investment worthiness of this bond. It is just a function that helps you to well solve your liquidity need. If you are a income to most investor, you need liquidity within the holding of this bond, then high coupon, high level of coupon payments could fit your needs. Well, so those are more likely to be a, well, a marketing towards selling pinch of bond. It does not really interfere the quality of the bond. It affects the price of the bond, of course. Now, I want to insert a, well, quick knowledge here that is, when we talk about coupon payment, it has certain features, such as it has a fixed amount and it comes in a fixed time interval, for example, every six months, every year, and it has a limited life. So there is a limited number of the coupon payments we can receive. So that fits the annuity of cash flow in finance term. So we know that when we talk about the present value of this annuity, we are actually looking like a function quite well, for every successive term, there is a constant ratio. For example, C1 divided by and C2 divided by raised to the power of 2. See these two functions. That's the initial term. So the second term and the initial term has a ratio of that. And the relationship continues because we know that the third, the third term raised to the power of three, between these two terms, there is a ratio also looking like that. So that is the constant ratio within, uh, let's say, the present value function of the coupon payments when we discount them one by one. So that fix the definition of geometric proportion series. So geometric proportion series indicates that there is a constant ratio between every successive term. So that 
fits the PV function when we calculate the present value of coupons. So we can, for a ease of calculation, we can use the sum of the geometric proportion series. So A1 stands for the first term of the series. So in our case, it's this term. And the constant ratio is Q, which is here. So that is our constant term. Now, we insert these two terms. We insert these two terms into the function. We will have the sum of these geometric proportion series. Now, the reason why I introduce is that well, for example, if we have a limited numbers of coupons, for example, just five coupon numbers, then discount them one by one is not a hard job to do. However, if we have many coupon payments, for example, 20, then simply discounting them one by one just seems very, very tedious. So what we can do is we can apply the geometric proportion series for such calculation. So for the case of for the ease of calculation. All right, now that's the end of this session. In this session, we have covered some of the basic features of the bond and what determines the present value of bonds and what is a premium bond, what is a discount bond. All right, so in the next session, we are going to look at the bond evaluation even closer. Stay tuned, see you next time. Bye-bye.